My goal today is to address you folks who are trying to get the best listening experience for your money out of your phone via wired headphones. I'm going to start this off with the context surrounding wired audio on phones, so if you already know how we wound up in the confusing, frustrating hellscape that is our current timeline, you can skip ahead to the next chapter to get right into the meat and potatoes of the products we're reviewing today. For those of you that aren't sure what I'm talking about, let us start at the very beginning. Julie, no, no, Julie, down! <clears throat> so, first, the heavens and the earth, then the land and the sea, followed by vegetation, creeping life, fish of the ocean, fowls of the air, and beasts of the field, eventually man, and with them, ears. We're talking about audio, after all. For today's purposes, whatever weight you place on the rest of the world, the most important thing in the universe are your ears. Those two biological microphones responsible for feeding pressure waves into your sensory nervous system are how you interact with virtually every aspect of sound. This is accomplished as they detect and react to vibrations in whatever medium is pressed against your eardrum, and then convert that vibration into the electrical signals used to communicate that information with your brain. It is an inherently analog input method converted to your body's bioelectrical equivalent of digital information, and all in all, it's a pretty impressive little bit of organic engineering. Somebody's probably already in the comments typing about the hazy distinction between sound and other vibrations, and pointing out that I'm ignoring sub-bass, but look at that, just mentioned it. We're just going over the sounds processed by your ears, given the constraints at work here, and the fact that your ears are leagues more sensitive than your butt. So, say you wanted to use your little organic microphones to listen to some music. What are your options? Assuming you're not literally standing in a room with the instruments, basically all the pressure waves that make up the music you listen to will be generated by the vibrating diaphragm of some sort of speaker. Because your ears and the pressure waves they detect are analog in nature, the device that creates the waves must also be analog. If you're using your phone to listen to music, however, the music which you are listening to was originally stored in a digital format. This presents a format disconnect. In order for you to hear your music then, something called a digital-to-analog converter, or a DAC for short, is needed to take the digital signal and reform it into an analog signal, which is then sent through some form of amplification and turned into vibrations by a speaker of some sort. Phones used to have an analog signal output port connected to a built-in DAC specifically for this use case. From this port, you got a signal just powerful enough to drive a basic pair of headphones or feed a larger system with its own discrete amplification. You may recognize this analog signal output. Colloquially, we call it the headphone jack. But back in 2016, through the sort of application of courage that makes it utterly infuriating to be their customer, Apple computers decided that there weren't enough steps in the process of enjoying digital music files on your phone and removed the DAC and analog audio port from the iPhone. Basically, the entire industry quickly began to follow suit, and we wound up in a world where if you want to listen to music with your phone, your options are to either connect it to a Bluetooth device, plug a dongle of some sort into the charging port, or use the built-in speaker. Which, just don't do that last one, please. You'll hurt this puppy's feelings. So let's say you want to listen to music via your phone, but you don't want to deal with the latency issues or battery concerns of something like Bluetooth, and you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on a high-end audiophile-level adapter that you're going to carry around in your pocket with a pair of earbuds. What kind of adapter should you be using in order to get the very best listening experience out of your phone? Since I'm an iPhone user, I will obviously and unfortunately be using lightning adapters in this comparison. The difference between audio transmission on a lightning connection versus USB-C is negligible, however, and all of the adapters I purchased today are available with USB-C versions, usually for less money, in point of fact. So my results here should still be useful to you Android phone havers. And my objective isn't to discover the best quality DAC for smartphones. I have neither the time nor inclination for that. No, the nuance to this quest is that we're assuming you have perfectly fine but not exemplary headphones and the adapter Apple included in your iPhone 7 box back in the day predictably snapped in two or got lost. Do you just spend the 10 bucks to buy another one from them, or could you be getting a better experience somewhere else? In essence, what is the best headphone adapter for the average consumer? What gives you the best blend of audio quality, build quality, and convenience at the cheapest price possible? That's what we're after today. So let's meet the contenders. Because I knew going in that price was going to be one of the main factors in my eventual recommendation, I turned my attention to AliExpress, where you can cut out the middleman in buying cheap electronics and significantly reduce the price. I then went looking through the available adapters and bought four at prices ranging from $1 to $20. Coming in first at a frankly unbelievable one freedom doll hair is the knockoff. This unbranded monstrosity is longer, stiffer, and somehow even worse built than the generic Apple adapter, but there's a chance it will produce sounds. Next up, costing a svelte three Washingtons, is the iAxes, a unique design that pairs a rigid, low-profile adapter with a remarkably thin aluminum shell. 
Quality is hard to gauge given the weight, or lack thereof, but it's our only contender today that lets you charge and listen at the same time. Third to the ring is the JC Ally headphone adapter, costing just a hair more than the official Apple dongle at $11. With great price comes great responsibility, but JC Ally claims they're using the same DAC as Apple, and for a dollar more, this thing is a looker. And last, strutting in a whopping $19.99, the HiDAC Audio Dongle. She's pricey, a little girthy, but the writing on the wall for the other adapters is the ALC5686 DAC, capable of outputting these numbers that nobody here really understands. Also, we've got the actual Apple adapter to compare to, because at least on the iPhone, I figure that's what most people will be, uh, comparing to. Also, also, we have a sample of what you could get by spending 40 or 50 bucks on a quote-unquote brand name adapter. It's still a Chinese adapter from a Chinese company, of course, but DD Audio actually has a global distribution network, so you can buy these on Amazon or eBay with reasonable shipping times. Also key is the fact that this is a bespoke product designed by DD Audio and not just a rebranded version of one of the other adapters we've got, which is probably what you'd get buying a Belkin adapter in Walmart. So here's our lineup. The testing apparatus consists of a sampling of lossless music tracks from Apple Music, two pairs of better-than-average headphones in terms of neutrality and soundstage, and my ratty old flesh microphones. This of course means that my testing was subjective, but I'll try to explain my experience with as much detail as possible so you'll know how your needs and opinions will stack up against my impressions. Representing earbuds are an older version of the KZ ZST in-ear monitors, which aren't perfectly flat, but for 15 bucks they're amazingly clear and balanced. On the over-ear can side, we have the Superlux HD 681s, which are mostly open-backed and also incredibly clear and balanced for their $30 price. Odds are pretty good that whatever wired headphones most folks are using to listen to their music, these are at least equivalent in quality. As a side note, if you're thinking about upgrading from whatever earbuds came with your phone, I would heartily recommend either of these for your budget-conscious pleasure. When talking about the sound of these little dongles, they're close enough together on consumer-grade headphones that there's really only three possible categories. Notably better than the generic Apple adapter, notably worse than the generic Apple adapter, and audibly indiscernible from the generic Apple adapter. The majority of the adapters fall into that last bucket with only the $1 unbranded unit and the HiDAC adapter being notably different at all, but we'll talk about the unique circumstances surrounding those adapters in a moment. First, let's talk about how, generally speaking, these adapters sounded the same with only very small variation. The JC Ally adapter was audibly identical to Apple's. After multiple hours of listening in various positions to various tracks and various settings, I couldn't detect a difference even when I was wrenching the connector around inside the lightning port. The iAccess was also audibly identical, but on occasion when the headphone cord was tugged, for instance, there would be a momentary and very slight crackle. There was no hiss or other noise in the dead zone between tracks normally, so my guess is this is down to dirty or slightly lower quality contacts within the headphone port itself. The DD Audio adapter was also audibly the same as Apple's adapter, though for some reason it wouldn't play both channels at the same level with the jack fully inserted. I'm guessing this is a one-off defect, again likely within the headphone port, all three of these adapters provide an extremely similar listening experience to the generic dongle, which probably shouldn't be a surprise, considering that in an effort to make feature parity with the Apple adapter, they all claim to use the exact same audio chips as Apple. This allows you to run headsets through the adapter and use inline remotes for volume and summoning Siri, of course, but it also means that the only way to differentiate them is price and design. For $3, there's really no arguing against the fact that the iAccess dongle is probably going to work great for most people. The little crackles I heard weren't consistent enough to cause me any real pause, and this form factor is amazing for pocketability. You can even attach it to your keyring if you'd like, and it comes with a clip for that express purpose. My personal preference would actually be to leave it attached to the phone, which it can do without giving me any undue concern over the stress it might place on the lightning port while it's being tossed around in a purse. Add to all of that the fact that it allows you to charge while listening, and it seems like a no-brainer. I did test that, by the way. There appears to be sufficient isolation between the charging and audio circuits to prevent any noise, at least so far as I could detect, and it charged at the full speed of the 18-watt charger I was using. My only concern worth noting is that case compatibility is going to be an issue with this one. I tried it with a fairly low-profile case, and it was fine, but with thicker cases, it's just not going to fit. That right-angle format isn't going to be for everyone, however, even if you run your phone naked like I do. If, for instance, your headphones have a straight jack, like the Superluxes, instead of a right-angle jack, like the KSTs, 
you might prefer one of the adapters that comes straight out of the back of the phone to improve the device pocketability while listening. Of these adapters, the Apple adapter is actually the cheapest, but I think most people would be happier with the JC Ally. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but the connector housings are metal and the overall feel of the thing is substantially more robust than the Apple adapter. In the hand, it feels like it costs significantly more than the Apple adapter, so that extra dollar is doing quite a bit of work. The aesthetics are better as well, and for my money, the added length makes it easier to keep track of. Despite that, the wiring is still very compliant, so it doesn't feel bulky, and you can wrap it up with a pair of earbuds in your pocket quite nicely. My unstated goal here was really to see whether there were solid adapters I could recommend over whatever shipped with your phone or whatever you could buy at Walmart, mainly because I personally think these giant retailers have enough of your money already. And at first blush, I was encouraged by the prospect of the DD Audio adapters, but I can't in good conscience recommend at least their lower end dongles. At 40 bucks, new, the reason for that should be clear. The package is very attractive, yes, but it's not so tight to the body of the phone that I'd want to leave it plugged in all the time, and it's fetching tiny, so it's very easy to misplace. I wouldn't want to leave it connected to my earbuds full time either, given its weight, and on top of all that, it costs more than literally every other option we've got here without sounding any better than most of them. So, that's a no from me. The Apple adapter is fine, and if you're still rocking the one that came with your phone back when they were including those with phones and it's not giving you any grief, it's not really worth changing up to either the iAccess or JC Ally adapters. But if you're getting an adapter to leave in your car or something like that, or if you need to replace a broken adapter, for the love, don't give Apple any more of your money. The honest truth is I expect this to be the case for most of the adapters that ship with phones. I can't confirm this now, but I'd guess that the form factor and build quality advantages of something like the iAccess or JC Ally adapters are going to apply to the adapter that shipped with your Samsung phone too. And unless the Samsung dongle is actually audiophile gear. Feel free to let me know in the comments if I've misjudged that thing. But hold on a second, because that is not the full picture. Uh, or, well, if, if you're looking for alternatives to the adapter that shipped with your phone for cheap that don't actively sound worse, I, I guess that actually is most of the picture. But just give me a minute while I make the case for trading up your actual audio experience a little. See, I was worried about testing this HiDAC adapter. I wasn't sure my headphones, which are great for the price but still cost a tenth as much money as entry-level audiophile gear, would be good enough for me to be able to detect a difference in audio quality if there really was one. I also wasn't sure that my ears would be able to detect the difference. I blame my high school drumline for that paranoia. And to top it all off, I wasn't sure that, even if I could detect a difference in quality, it would be noticeable enough for me to be sure. But jumping back and forth between this adapter and the Apple dongle with increasing amounts of disbelief, it took about the first 30 seconds of the song Dreams by the Cranberries for me to stop worrying. The simple fact is that, yes, there is a notable difference in audio quality between the HiDAC adapter and the generic Apple DAC. It's not enormous, I don't want to give it that kind of credit, and if you're using crappy dollar store earbuds, I doubt it would make any difference at all. But even on my $15 KSTs, the improvement is immediately apparent. The music doesn't sound different necessarily, but it does sound wider, more alive. There's texture to individual instruments that doesn't come across on the other adapters in this test, and that unlocks an extra level of detail. I won't say it's transcendent or anything like that, but it is absolutely better. And yeah, it's bulkier than the other adapters, and yeah, it's more expensive than the other adapters. It's also kind of picky. It doesn't like having headphones plugged in after the adapter is already in the lightning port. That causes the audio to jump to full volume and then autoplay at about 3x speed. It also shows up in iOS as the name of the DAC inside rather than just headphones. So there's clearly a slightly different audio interface here, which means you can't run a headset or control Siri through this dongle like you can the others. It also isn't going to magically make all of your music hi-fi. Well-mastered lossless tracks on Apple Music sound great, but the lower fidelity tracks on the service that have been crushed by compression algorithms still sound like they've been crushed by compression algorithms. Setting all that aside though, if you can spare 20 bucks to just have an extra slightly less convenient dongle specifically for listening to music, you should absolutely think about grabbing one of these. It really does make a difference. And that leaves me with only one last thing to address before I conclude my investigation here. The unbranded Apple lookalike. This thing, well, it isn't actually a lightning headphone adapter. I kid you not. Yes, you are seeing a lightning port there. Yes, it does plug into the phone on one end and a pair of headphones on the other. And yes, audio does come out when you do that. But terrible build quality aside, this thing is a liar, because whatever the underlying circuitry is, it presents itself to iOS as a Bluetooth headset. 
a Bates Bluetooth headset. This confirmation dialog pops up the first time you plug it in, and then you get a similar connection dialog every time you plug it in after that. It's using Apple's quote-unquote magic pairing process, supposedly reserved for AirPods and Beats headphones, despite obviously not being either of those things. Bear that little tidbit in mind the next time you see somebody selling AirPods for 50 bucks. But yes, this adapter. It's possibly the most baffling thing I've ever seen. One of two things is happening here. They either didn't want to bother with the lightning audio protocol, so they figured out a way to spoof the lightning port into using Apple's H1 Bluetooth audio protocol instead, or there is a literal Bluetooth module posing as an H1 inside of the headphone port end of this thing that has no battery and only powers on when it can draw from the phone's battery via the lightning port. In either case, the audio comes across as Bluetooth, is decoded on the device, and then played to your ears. That means you get all of the latency issues and degraded audio quality of, like, Bluetooth 3, it sounds like, without the small benefit of it actually being wireless. This adapter is so hilarious, I don't even mind that I bought it. But under no circumstances should you get one. It's literal trash. Live vicariously through me instead. And comment below if you want a future video of me chopping this thing open to see if I can figure out what exactly is going on in here. So, conclusion. The simple takeaway is that depending on your preference for form factor and your need to charge while you use your headphones, you can take your pick between the remarkably priced iAccess adapter or the attractive and well-built JC Ally adapter. But the nuance here is that, yes, for $20 you can actually get improved audio quality over the generic adapter that shipped with your phone. You sacrifice some minor creature comforts to get it, but in my mind, it's absolutely worth it. And maybe the best part is that if you really do want the best of both worlds, it costs between 25 and 30 bucks to have it all. For my part, I'm genuinely going to pick up a HiDAC adapter with a USB-C port on it and see if it'll work as an audio interface for my computer. It's USB-C, so it has to work with standard USB-C ports. Right? <laughs>